for those two words. Ungu zilege maela nala makama mabili. Ngokulegile nogutu futige au potewe. Aweko lao makama. Lana ayiko nefom futi engi azio enawo. And I would, I would actually appreciate to answer me as a witness, not as a magistrate, as a witness that has been sworn in. My question is, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Mgumizu, she's a magistrate. Yes. <coughs> that, my Lord, that cannot no, no. change. You're saying she must answer you not as a magistrate. She is a magistrate. She is a magistrate, yes. my lord. That cannot change. Yeah, that's But right. she must. I'll yeah, make an example of uh, Nelson Mandela, my lord. He was a, a witness in the in matter of uh, Louis Late. He has never been addressed as a, 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 as a president of the country at that time. There, could, there, there must be a distinction between your position and as being sworn in as a witness. Yeah. Hence, sorry, yeah, yeah, you may have she, a point she, about She can that. easily say. <laughs> Advocate, I mean, she's inviting me to 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 to, to draw such conclusions no. as I'm requesting the court for the protection of this witness as the duty of the court. Mm. She must understand that where she is seated, she is a witness. Yes, the evidence that she's going to. I'm talking about parole evidence here. That's the oral evidence that you're giving. What you did outside is an extrinsic evidence. We are trying to follow the extrinsic evidence whether you complied with it. You are the witness to say that. Hence, if I'm saying get into the answers, the wording, let's look at paragraph 1A, for instance. Can you please read it for me? I inform the deponent that I am a magistrate. Thank you. Stop there. Thank you. I just want to go through the wedding. What were you expecting from the deponent? If you, that forms, tell the deponent that you are the magistrate. What does it say? Was it necessary for that form to say, I'm the magistrate? Natuurlijk moet die man weet vir wie hy verskyn. Hy behoort te weet in wat omstandighere hy bevind, waar in hy gevat is, voor wie hy verskyn met wie hy praat. Yes, of course, he had to know uh, before whom was he appearing, the circumstances under which he was or he found himself uh, in. Bok mele uguti azige, uguti upambi gobani, uguti futi nesimoge aenga panzi kwa so. The introduction in the presence of an attorney, your introduction, in the presence of the attorney, was that, was that not sufficient enough for him to believe that you are a magistrate? No, at that stage, I had never heard of anyone who said that I was a calandros. No one would have known that I was a calandros. I had not had a tour for him. I was in a civil dress and I was in a kantoor. At that stage, sir, I hadn't informed anyone that I was a magistrate. Uh, no one knew I wasn't wearing my gown or my robe, and I was in my civilian clothing, and I was in an office. That means... Hierdie man het gevra om na een hoofd toe gevat te word. Hy word in een kantoor ingevat met een persoon met civiele draag. This gentleman requested to go to court, or this gentleman requested to be taken to court. He is then taken into an office with a, with a person who is in civilian clothing. Can we, we not... Sorry, 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 sorry. Musu ya ngena ke manje, ungena kwe ovisi, eli no muntu oiko gele nje ingu bozaake. I'm asking you, Mrs. Cronier, do not involve or say something that is not asked. My question is, before you completed, there are particulars of the deponent on top there, which you got from the, either the lawyer or the deponent or the investigating officer. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand what you say. Yes, I understand what you say. My question is, is it according to the paragraph 1A, 
was it necessary to mention that you are a magistrate? Does that not of constitute inducement? No. no. I'll leave it for argument. My, my, my submission and my, I'll put it to you that that pro forma on its own, it, it has on a value, face value of it. We call it a patent defect. It has an element of inducement. If you say I'm a magistrate, that means already you sway the impulse of the of the deponent. Do you agree? Yeah. No. Thank you. I'll leave it for argument. Proceed. I'll stop you where, wherever I want you to, to stop. Proceed with that, uh, with that uh, paragraph. You said I'm the magistrate, comma. And I'm not in any way involved in Thank the investigation. You. Thank you. He did not ask. You are telling him. You are making him comfortable, according to am I right? I'm a magistrate. I'm not involved in the investigation. You are making the deponent comfortable. Is that, is that not so? That's all the effect, eh? That's, uh, that uh, will have that effect, yes. Yeboge logo kuti ngimche logo tangsioni magistrate, aswari ngi magistrate, futi ige angsioni nganyo penyu, yinto wage leyo inga menza age ugu tige na yege abese na ose ea kulegal. Ait wake rachem te viet uku my doors. He also has a right, sorry. Bo ak and pass. Also has, had, has or had a right to know as to why he was there and where do I fit in. Futi wane na lunge logo wazi ige ugu don't get emotional, ma'am. My question, answer my question as I ask you. Because I followed the logic. If you say I made him comfortable, I'm, I'm satisfied. There's a, a next question to follow. Do you understand? That's a good question. Basis for saying the witness is getting emotional. Uh, I think if my learned friend can just confine himself just to asking questions without uh, taking the witness. My Lord, when I'm asking the question from the witness and tends to say things which do not relate to my question, as it has been indicated, that is a magistrate. He is actually getting out of the scope of the profession. Hence, I just want to confine the magistrate, or the witness, not the magistrate, the witness on the line of questioning, because I've got the reason to stick on that paragraph 1A. Sorry, Mr. Gomez. I don't wish to interfere. Doesn't section 217 speak of a magistrate who can take a confession? It speaks about the magistrate. Yes. That's and correct. she is approached by her senior Mrs. Dupisi as a magistrate to go and take a confession. May, it's, may. it's just egregious that uh, she happens to be a witness, but she is also a magistrate. And she, when she was told, asked or requested by Mrs. Duplicy to take a confession, she was being instructed to do or requested to do so as a magistrate, as stipulated in Section 217 of the Constitution. Thank you. I mean, of, may, of may the I, Criminal may, Procedure Act. May I clarify that? Yes, OK. The reason why I want to clarify mm. is because we are running away from the the, the 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 part the, the element of inducement a provision specifically say it must be made before the magistrate mm. it does not introduce the magistrate to the taking of the confession i'm not sure if you understand no, I but i said i, I want to leave it for argument yeah. may i repeat no, what I, what i was submitting before the yes. lordship yeah okay. my lordship is that 
Section 217 mm. says it must be taken, is directing us that such a particular confession must be taken by a magistrate. Yes. But now, you are the magistrate, you've got the forms from Mrs. Duplessy, mm. everyone, especially in the presence of an attorney. She should have actually introduced herself to say, I'm the attorney, I'm sorry, I'm the magistrate who's coming to take a, a confession. I was told that I must come and assist in the taking of a confession. Now, my concern is about the patent defect that is on that performer. Because okay. when you introduce yourself in the in a statement where he must freely make a statement, there's no point that she was supposed to say, I'm a magistrate. What should she have said? A statement, according to you. According to me, mm. a statement must have been narrated immediately to say, on this particular day, this is what I've no, done. No, no, the question, no, no. Okay. What would you have said? Because you say she was not supposed to have said, I am a magistrate. Now, I'm just inquiring, what should she have said? Meaning, my Lord, must I correct the performer? Uh, according to no, the... No, 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 I'm just asking you because you're uh, saying... My Lord, I've never conducted a, 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 a confession and I was not, I'm not empowered by any law to take to, okay. to, to do it. So I cannot think of a word that I can use when I'm taking a confession. I'm a lay person when it comes to that. A person with 50 years confessions that she has made, they don't see the element of inducement in that paragraph A. Because all that you, the deponent was going to say is because he believed, and I'm not done with that paragraph. May I still proceed with that paragraph? <laughs> Can we continue to read that paragraph, ma'am? That I do not work with the police or any other person in this case and that he can speak freely and without fear in my presence. Uh, Nogutige and Sebenzi, Namapoisa, Namage Mupi Omunya Umundu Gulitala Devi, Nogutige and Apulumage, Nogukulegile, Ange Sabi, Gikona. Thank you. The wedding you can speak. Do you agree that is not coming from the deponent? I've never claimed that it came from him. But you directed, in terms of that wedding, you directed the deponent to speak because yeah. you told him that you are not a police officer, you are not part of the investigation, you are a magistrate. But you further say you can. Do you understand what I'm saying? He had a choice to speak or not to speak. It was his choice. So what is the next, what was the answer given by the, by the deponent today? It's handwritten, if I'm not mistaken. After that paragraph, after paragraph 1A. There is no answer given by the deponent at that point in time because I continue to explain to him paragraph B and C before I asked him if he understood the explanation. Let's hear what paragraph B says. You also informed that if necessary, you might, will be af uh, afforded protection against any irregularities. Thank you. Stop there. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Footy, no good at no mage, no mouse, no get what vigelega, who can go pig, Ogunga Hambigas. Is that not a promise? 
is that not a promise? I'm asking, is that not a promise? It might be construed as a promise that he needs to, if he feels threatened, that arrangements will be made for his I'm protection. I'm still there. Don't go f further than that. I ask you, you to want stop. Me to, do you want me to interpret for your client, sir? No, no. I wanted to but stop. She still, I, want to, I need to interpret what she says. It's for your client, sir. Please allow me to. Lanage Ungasho Gumakazo Logo Ubuti Yebo Isona is Tembi Solis, Moguti Uyachelage, Umago Uguti Uziza and Natige Ukonage, Nomage Uye Saba, Uguti Gamalung Selva, Azo Gwenziwage, Uguti Avige Lege. I ended. I ended where you said he will be protected and you considered that it amounts to a promise. I is not to say that I will be protected. Nee, he was informed and I quote, if necessary, he will be afforded protection against any irregularities. Lana ge kukazwa ge uguti uma nomage iuba istingo si kona ge uzoti kwenseki swege uguti uya vigeleka. Did you, un, did you explain what kind of irregularities you were referring to? Nia? No. Ang shongo ge uguti umang kulmang uguti ge umagu uguti kukona ago ngazane kwenzi wakati na makamba kasi uguti ngangi show ni ngang kulmang ani. Did you establish whether the deponent understood what you meant by irregularities? Nia to story ni? Not at that stage. Galesus Catige and he shone over Nomagan, and Sexeg would be Uyaz Wag, and Omias is saying would give you tin, Oman Kuluman Gonga Longo, Gong and Zwanga Gas, and Mamonga Hambanga Gas. To put it on record, what irregularities were you referring to? Yenaka eats. Anything? Yenaka be influent, Yenaka drive a mente, Yenaka eats what the beer it. And it can Yenaka eats vias what I'd say your pipe, pent. Unreal is. Okay. And I was referring to anything, uh, any influence, any uh, threats that were made, anything that could, uh, in his eyes or uh, in his view, could have then uh, been uh, a, uh, an irregularity. It is not what it is my I not So as I am was then I it for me it was not explained to me, to him at that stage as to what irregularity is. If there was anything, then he would have informed me or told me about it. I must have well known that he could take care of his trust in any of the problems that he had, any of the things that he described as an unrealmatigheid, to do. He had to know that, or he knew that, Oh, what he had to know was that uh, uh, he had to take me into his confidence that anything that happened or any irregularity that happened that he had to inform me about that. Kwa gu uguti kwa kufanele azige uguti no kwa ma yini ge ea enze, ea enze gile, e futi nga zange enze ge ngentle la noma ngentle la kwa kufanele uguti enze ge ngayo anchele. Without putting any ideas into his head, in a panel of Gutinje, Ubusufaga again, Noma Yenige, a candalak, Noma Gemfaga and Jama ideas a candalak. But with regard to irregularity, we are the only one who knew about or the context or the content of irregularity. That has never been explained to the deponent. That's my point. You're the only one who knew about irregularities. I wasn't aware of any irregularity at that stage, sir. Okay. Uh, I wasn't aware of any irregularity at that stage, sir. I wasn't aware of any irregularity at that stage, sir. I wasn't aware of any irregularity at that stage, sir. Any charge against you? Eh, absolut na ge logo ukula ge tala futi ge angla lela ng angzanga lada ge uzola lela ah itala noma amatala owe tuesway. Right. That's very important. At the time, 
Ntanzi was interviewed by you, specifically on the paragraph three, uh, on, on, on paragraph C. Did he appear you as an accused person? Did he appear you as a suspect? Or any person who wanted to make a confession before you? I don't understand your May question. May I rephrase it? At that time, Danzi appeared before you on the 24th. Have you ascertained whether he has been charged or he was not charged or he was just an ordinary civilian who wanted to make a confession? Have you established it? Ek het nie daai vraag daar die op sy gevraag nie, so ek was nie seker of hy reeds aangekla was op die enige iets nie. Uh, ek het hom hanteer asof dit die persoon is wat na my toe gekom het, omdat hy uh, bekentenis wou maak op wat hy ook al wou sê. Op daai stadium het ek nie so weet wat het was. Uh, I did not ask the question in that form or in that manner. Uh, so I wasn't aware or I didn't know where as to whether he had been charged. Uh, I just took him as someone who came before me uh, to make a, a confession. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, 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 Ja, in sy teenwoordigheid, die, ek wil ek dit nie vir die onderzoekbeamte, dat is nie, ek het my aangeneem, toe is Sir Shant Mugwane um, vir my omself bekend gestel het, en vir doeleindes van die voltooiing van die forum, ek om gevraad vir die politiestasie en die kasnummer, sy dit nie beskikbaar gewees het nie, sy ek net daar geskryf het, not available or unknown. Yes, in his presence, that was at a time that when I spoke to uh, uh, Sergeant Vusumuzi uh, Mukhane, that's when I made inquiries with regards to the police station as well as the case number. If it wasn't there, I would then just have written not available. Nakuluma again, Nayege. She also said that uh, I wasn't aware or I didn't know whether he was the investigating officer or what. Ngakuluma again, Naye Umukhane Lonage, Ngati Rangbuzi Minuninga and Yalu Ikala, Uguti Police Station, Yipi, a case number Yipi, Umago Guti and Gekoge, Nangzo Paragala, Pogutika, a equal meaning one. Make secret confesses of Pakentanes. Kan het nie verska word nie, want as nie die sier geopen of geregistreer nie, en dan skryf ek niks in daar. With uh, a certain, uh, uh, a certain uh, or some uh, confessions, uh, it is that information is not there simply because uh, maybe there is no uh, docket that has, uh, 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 no docket exists at that stage. So I would then not write that because it is not contained. Met ander confessies wat ek al hanteer het, is die persoon, um, of is daar een dossier geopen, maar niemand is nog formeel aangeklaan. So met ander woorde, daar is iets, een kasnummer, maar niemand is nog formeel op die saak aangeklaan. So ek kan al reeds die inlichting hee met die confessie, maar die persoon kan of aangeklaan wees of nie aangeklaan wees nie. With certain uh, confessions, uh, it is so that uh, there is already a docket, but no one has yet been formally charged. So there would be some information. So it's either a person has been charged or a person has not yet been formally charged. In hierdie geval weet ek nie of hy wel al aangekla was of nie ten opzichte van die beskikbaarheid van die inlichting van die dossier. Uh, but in this particular case, I, don't, I, I didn't know as to whether he had been charged or not with uh, regards to the uh, available information regarding this docket. Before we move on to paragraph 4, I think other paragraphs were reduced. And the other paragraph relates to a minor. But for the benefit of the public,
does the taking of a confession prescribes a jurisdiction, a place where it's supposed to be taken? No. Uktatwa gegwa yo confession agusho ge noma ge abkazi guguti gunenda we tease ekfanele noma e umamanga pants gunenda we tease like fanele guguti tatele kon. Are you aware that the deponent was arrested at Rustinbeck? No. No. Angazi ge noma angwazi ge guguti wa eboshele at Rustinbeck. Are you aware that the deponent was arrested on the 16th of June, 2020? 2020. He informed me as such that he was arrested on the 16th of June. Is there any evidence that he was arrested on the 16th of June? Request in an adjournment. What time is it? Uh, five to one. Five to one. Yes. Mm -hmm. We can resume at two. Two o'clock. Okay. Two o'clock. We return. An accused person is somebody who has already been charged. Am I right? That's correct. Before he is charged, he is a suspect. Am I right? That's correct. And uh, you are you were approached by the police with a person who you were approached with a person eventually you took a, a confession and completed a pro forma with an incomplete information that the person in front of you is not either a suspect nor an accused. Is that so? That's correct. Kunjalo ge ugu tinkati ge nkwale sa lefom bengazi na mogu tungu msola u munte se boshi wa osoche sa matala na matka. Right. In other words, the accused person or the deponent, I'll refer him as a deponent, in your own opinion, was it not, was it irregular for you to take a confession on a person that you have not satisfied yourself that he has been touched? No. No. And uh, it is your evidence that you explain the constitutional right of the of the deponent. Is that so? Now, what's the constitutional right you provide? Uh, which constitutional right are you referring to? Okay, a right to remain silent. E.g., a right to remain silent. A right not to self-incriminate. That is correct. Sorry? I have to say that I need, as I need my document, I can't advise. If I can just, if you just give me a moment just to refer to my document. Um, this is correct. Black say fear, paragraph six. That's correct. Page four, paragraph six. Can I come yes? Can I read it? I'll tell you to read. Just a moment, ma'am. Just a second. I'm, I'm trying to peruse that paragraph.
Can you please, please uh, read it? Paragraph 6. And I call on. I informed the deponent that he has the right to remain silent and that nobody can force him to make a statement and that if he chooses to make a statement, nobody can force him to divulge any self-incriminating evidence or information, rather. And his answer was, I understood. Okay, and I call on, do you wish to remain silent or do you wish to continue to make a statement? <coughs> and the answer was, I want to continue to make a statement. Uh, I then proceed and then the next question is the one where it says, do you wish to remain, oh sorry, it's in English. We are fisa yin, noma we are funa yin, uktula, unga asho luto, noma ufisa ukubela uguti wenze, eh, statmende, impendule ya keyase itige, ngia funa ukubela mwenze statmende. So, may I approach my colleague? Uh, yes, my yes, yes. <laughs> my question is, when you explained that right, you explained the right that is uh, uh, provided by section 35 of the constitution is that correct this correct uh, that is uh, correct yebo ku ikunisoke uma bengikhaza lokho bengikhaza lokho okubhalweke noma okhona kuyeke u section 35 can you please read uh, section 35 especially yeah section 35 1 or oh, sorry let me just be specific can you please read Section 35, in conjunction with the rights that you have explained, that you have already given to the court, that are the rights that you explained to the court. Mm -hmm. section 35? No, no, no. Just the right, section 35, and specifically to the provision that relates to remain silent. Yeah. Um, article 35, sub 1a, Na aanleiding van die boekie wat nou in my oorhandig is van die Constitutie, lees as volg in Engels, en ek hal aan, Everyone who is arrested for allegedly committing an offense has the right to remain silent. Dit is in subartikel A. Dit is in uh, subsection A. Um, the witness says this quoting from the booklet uh, that has just been provided to her. Everyone, should I proceed? Just a second, ma'am. I'll tell you to proceed. And the, 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 the other one that relates to self incrimination. Um, Article 35 in sub Article B, gaan voort in bepaal die volgende. And I call on to be informed promptly, Roman 1 of the right to remain silent and two of the consequence of the remaining of not remaining silent thank you lana ke ikhuluma ke ukuthi ke ilungelo ke loku ukuthi ungasho lutho nokuthi futhi imiphumela yokuthi unga noma ke ukhulumeke ukuthi ingaba yini uyena ke lokho u section 35 was it not important to inform him that he is still presumed innocent until proven guilty. Was it not necessary to? Ek sien nie die nodigheid, en het nie die nodigheid gesien, hoekom dit in een bekentenis pertinent aan hom genoem moet word, nie. I don't see... Hy is... Sorry. Met proceed, hy is. 
I don't see or, or it didn't see the necessity or the need uh, in a confession uh, to uh, say or to mention that to him. Yeah, come on, Fortran. Um, I was for the Wurdige Wees, the Ras for the Wurdige Ruhr. He was also represented by a legal representative. Ugutige, Gimchelege, Uguti, Umuntuge, Fanele Futige, Nomage, Umuntu, Gimchele, Lok, and Gisbona, Gisti, Mongobage, Ebenomeli, Ayena, and Galilo Langa, or Ayakona, Futi Lapo. This is a beginsel for us, Rach, that all persoene beskou word as um, onskuldig doordat hulle in een strafhof boe redelike twyfel as skuldig bevind word. Uh, it is a principle of, uh, of our law that uh, each and every person uh, be uh, presumed to be innocent until uh, proven uh, guilty by a court of law. Go um tetoge o corner lanage enings in Africa o gutige. Now, by nigger of Vela and Candola, Ogutilo Munduge, Utata Nanjang or Mundu Unge Natala, Guze Gufiga, Finale Lege, Gabala Conage, Utwage, Usela Hiwe Amatal. In it act and left off and that it need a furwer was, need Nureha Ach, Umum Asudona and Telem. And then, as a result of me then considering that not to be a trial, then did not uh, see the need to inform him as such. Ngenwayogutige Super nuchter by sy volle positieve en verstaan hanteer as uh, persoon wat skuldig is wat sy onskuld moet bewys. Uh, at no stage whilst uh, he was uh, uh, then uh, before me and uh, as uh, he was uh, that uh, informed uh, that he would be doing this freely, voluntarily, that he was in his south and his sober senses at no stage. He was, he was at no stage at that time then considered by myself uh, as someone who had to prove his guilt to me. May I just put it to you as a person who has a legal expertise that you were under a legal duty or obligation to explain the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty because the effect of taking a confession does not conclude his conviction. I what is your opinion? Uh, I take note of the opinion. Thank you. Let's proceed. Can you please assist or can you please assist me to read a provision relating to 48 hours. I think it's 35.3 if I'm not mistaken. In Article 35, sub Article 1, Dear Romans 1, to be brought before court as soon as reasonable possible, but not later than the 48 hours after the arrest, unquote. Lana ges kazwa ge noma ufunda lana ge inga inye la ikuluma kona ge ngeskati umunda kufanelege ayo vela ngasem kantolo nga pam emmuva kukuti ebo shiwa. The deponent or the accused, Mr. Ndanzi, was arrested on the 16th of June 2020 and brought to you on the 24th of June 22. I'm talking about eight days from the date of arrest. Do you know that? I also um, noted it or marked it as such. And when he was brought to you, that's my instruction. When he was brought to you to take a confession, he was not taken to court. He never appeared in court. 
within 48 hours. Ek raak geen kennis of hy verskyn het of nie. Dit is nie binnen my kennisveld gewees op die stadium nie. I have no knowledge as to whether he was, uh, he did uh, go to court or not. It, it was not within my knowledge at that particular time. Ukuthi wayileke enkantolo noma akayanga ke eh phamke kwemanje angikwazike lokho aksiyona into engangiyazi ngaleso sikhathi leso. In the normal course when you are presiding as a as a magistrate when an accused is brought after 48 hours what normally happens in court for the benefit of the public and if a person is brought after 48 hours has lapsed what normally happens? what is your decision as a magistrate normal weg persoonlik as landros in a strafhof hou ek as artikel 342a ondersoek en um, verwijder die saak van die rol as die omstandighede dit noodzaak. 342a. Uh. Mm. Uh, under normal uh, circumstances, and I would then uh, hold a section 342a inquiry, and uh, if need be, I would then uh, strike the uh, case from the court role. Uma gegu is ding, noma uma umuntu eletra gepam gwen kantolo e muva wama hora au 48, Thank you. My instruction is that Mr. Ndanzi was taken to court. First appearance of Mr. Ndanzi was on the 27th of October 2020. I have no knowledge of that. Ugutike Wata Lubia Ma and Kandolong is you twenty seven October twenty twenty and Guazlo. The question as per the previous question as per the previous answer you gave, if Mr. Danzi was brought before you as a magistrate on the twenty seventh of October, if he was arrested on the sixth sixteenth of June you would strike the matter of the role, is that correct? I will first do the in terms of Article 342A, angesien ek geen sake kan verwijder van die role sonder sodanig ondersoek nie. I would first have held the inquiry, the Section 342A inquiry, I cannot just remove a case or strike a case of the role without such an inquiry. Umago ugutige waye vela pambi kwa mingazo lezo yi 27th ga October 2020, from the version of the accused to say his first appearance was on the 27th of October 2020, 2020 and he was arrested on the 16th. According to this version, it was not a reasonable time for him to be brought to court. Do you agree? <laughs> I, I think it's wrong for my learned friend to put a question that is, that is not correct to the witness. Um, he's in possession of proceedings in, 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 in other cases, and um, unless he specifies his, 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 his question, um, that question that is put into the witness is not correct. Uh, for, for clarity, I'm referring to this specific case. I'm referring to this matter. Advocat, I can't go on the word of the client to I say that he is on the 16 arrested. Uh, advocate, I can only take or go based on your client's uh, word or what the client told me that he was arrested on the 16th of June 2020. I can say if I was here in this case, arrested was or on another case. I don't know when he was arrested or what, and I don't know when he was arrested or here in this case. And I cannot tell as to whether he was arrested on that date on this particular matter 
or on another matter, and I cannot say when and when he did not appear or which matter. I'll leave that for a moment, ma'am. Let's just proceed on something else. May I proceed to ask the following question? This is the pro forma. This is the statement. These are attachments. I'm referring to the copies of the, um, the IDs of the officers. Does that all this constitute a, a confession? The verklaring ten opzichte van die confessie self is aangehaag met die voorvereistes uh, the, om te kom tot die verklaring is ook aangehaag. Okay. The statement uh, is also, uh, the statement is attached uh, together with the, uh, the requirements to get uh, to, the, to that particular statement. Is that when the list can you now look up from the guy, no more opting a guy, you go to your figure so naggy statement, who sang a missy? The verklaring slide met ander woorde my befinding in na aanleiding van die vraag wat gevraag is, die antwoorde wat gegee is. Uh, now uh, that then includes, that is now my finding with regards to uh, the questions that I posed as well as the answers that were given. Logo go faga paga tige, imi buzo enga i buza, kanye futi ne impendulo enga i tola. Nes mwome nga finye lak sot na. My question will be, that for right. some a deal for the verklaring in terms of Article 2 and 7. It then forms part of the statement in terms of Section 217. Kube gusuba yi nanyege ya soge statement de vesige statement de esenzo pansu kwa kege u Section 217. Mari bekente ne self ten opzichte van wat die deputant vir my gesê ten opzichte van die misdaad is net ten opzichte van anangsel A. Anangsel A. But then the statement with regards uh, to what it is that uh, the deponent uh, informed me with regards to the commission of the offence itself is uh, then an extra A. Kuse kuti ge sonage statement de lesi la konage enka zela konage oguti yini impela e nzega maelage ne kala leli wonage bese kuba an extra A. The bekente ne self is this an extra A, ma di yele document slide di verrichtinge in totaliteit in. The confession itself uh, is uh, an extra A, but the entire document uh, is, uh, uh, contains the proceedings as a whole. Mr. Guti, you have a confession in my statement, and you have a confession in the statement, and you have a confession in the statement, and you have a I just want clarity. An extra A consists of six pages, one to six. Is that so? That's correct. That is correct. An extra A, yeah, my page out six, one, you pick up six. From that statement, that is the statement of the confessor or the deponent. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. For the benefit of the public, was it supposed to be commissioned, signed, and commissioned before a commission of court? No. 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 All right. May I approach my colleague? Yes, yes. My Lord. I said, like, what are you talking Are you in possession of the statement? Yes. Yeah. That is correct. That is correct. Can, can we go to the last page, I think page six of the statement?
page six of the statement. Are you there? That's correct. That is correct. Do you see the signature of the deponent? I had here a um, initial gemaakt. The full handtekening verskyn op bladsy 8. Nadat die verrichtinge voltooi is, het ek om versoek om die volle handtekening te maak op die laatste bladsy, wat bladsy 8 was, van hierdie, en dan het ons allemaal verteken. Uh, uh, it's only his initials that appear there, but his full signature is on page 8. That's when everything was now completed, when I requested him to sign, and we all signed. We go to get a sign there, get a sign down, and I pick up page six. We beg and join again. My initials are okay. We go to get page eight, page look to now get ill. I call now get and so come to go to sign. The master cut your gong. Not he get success as signed. All right. From page one, if I may ask you to peruse it, peruse peruse from page one up to page five. Do you see any signature of? The deponent. Nee, net sy paraf. No, it's only his initials. Aga sain dan, aga page 1, yo fikako page 5, ogut in jobe ganje, a my initials al. My instruction is, is that he has never or did not attach any initials and he did not sign any statement. Especially in front of you. Tis in form alien. Uh, that is a lie. A man can jail law, a good teacher, a gas, a sign, a pamphlet, a bag, a initials. Sorry, I'm not interfering with your interpretation. Say, sir, let us ask you to sign the following statement. Page 1, 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 You said he signed on page 8. That is correct. That is correct. Page 8 is a, a pro forma. That is correct. That is correct. It's not a statement. That is correct. That is correct. When you saw the good thing, you tell us page 8, no good thing, you pro forma, you ask for a statement. A statement is separate from a pro forma. Mm. A pro forma is to insulate an inquiry before making a statement. Mm. Is that so? I can it seek so interpret Maybe you can interpret it as such. Some beggar on a beggar ganja logo, or put it from the nage, your nage is to give the sona statement. I was saying that on tau that when you're on the bekentenis afnim, the process and in lure. Uh, you just have to remember that uh, uh, when you take down a confession that uh, this process is a continuous uh, process. So ons die, ons hanteer die, of ek het die formaliteits vereist, dis eerst dis hanteer, en toe hy die verklaring wou afle, het ek dit gedoen, en ek het achterna, het ons um, hierdie dokumente onderteken, nadat hy bevestig het dat alles correct is, I first ten opzichte van sy verklaring. Mm, I, start, I first started with the requirements or with the, the formalities that is now on the uh, front pages and then when he wanted to make uh, the, the statement I then uh, when, uh, proceeded with it and then that is when now the documents uh, had now to be uh, signed. May I just hand over to you a pro forma that has a statement which has also made with the same intentions of taking a confession. This is just a confession which was taken by somebody else, which I just want to show you that there is a difference between that statement and the statement that I'm going to hand it over to you. With the leave of the court, may I hand it over to her? Yes. For comparison, my lord. Mr. Baloui. This is a pro forma 
used by commission to office justice of the peace. I don't know whether one can really compare the two. No, no, wait, wait, wait. You see, it's a pro forma? Um, of a statement taken down by justice of the peace. Not, not a magistrate. Not a magistrate. Yes. Okay, fine. So we're not comparing apples with no. apples. My Lord, actually, the, the main thing is I'm not going to the pro forma per se. To the the statement in which the the signature of the deponent appears in the statement. Do you see that? Agnem Kines. I take note. So the statement, you see that there's an, a pro forma and a statement. I see that. I see that. In that statement, there is a thumb print from each and every page. Do you confirm that? If not all pages, but there is a thumb print in that statement. Can you just give me an opportunity. I'm busy checking. I see the thumb print. Do you see the initials at the bottom of the of the state of the first page of the statement? I see that it's scribbled there. I see that it's scribbled there. I see that it's scribbled there. I see that it's scribbled of it a U of a Q of a X is and then no so a scribble. So I can see if that uh antiakening of a initial is I see that it net a mark is I see that there's something that looks or appears like a signature next to the thumbprint and then there's something that looks like an O, a Q or an X, and then there's another scribble. I cannot confirm as to whether that's a signature. Now let's go to the last page of that statement. What do you see there? Last page. What's the deal? Which part? What's the deal for Which part are you referring to? The last page of the statement. Funny confession. Yeah. Yeah. What do you see there? You saw after the scribble? This the same scribble. Bona jelium palo of fanayo. And where did the sign signature of justice of peace? And then uh, in, on top of that, it appears the signature yeah. of justice. Under, under the scribble, the okay. signature of justice of the peace in the full and all. Uh, just underneath that scribbling, it then appears the signature of justice of the peace as well as the full names. Amakamage, Alooge, Uktwawienage, Waitata, Amakamage, Apelel. And you'll honor Anastor Vire Daimaftra. And once again, right at the bottom, there's another thumbprint. Pindege Zanzig Menestupa. With uh, with another uh, signature. So there, do you see the, the signature of the deponent? On the same page? No, because this is not the dime after. So I try to start that someone from the Justice of the Peace of Sai can do it with the dime after. So I can't even say which one. Handtekening is wissen en nie. Okay, sorry. Of wie se 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 mark is wissen en of wie se time afdruk is die so. Ah, it's only a thumbprint, and I doubt strongly that a justice of a piece would then just put a thumbprint. So I cannot confirm which signature belong to who here from that which is which appears here. But anje is too palana footage yang gabaza ugu tige umuntu ugu yena ge owa etata the statement kunga yena kunga begi is too pangege ge show ugu tige signature ge bonala ugu tige gaban. May I rephrase it? May I rephrase my question? The signature that appears on behalf of the words justice of peace. Other than that signature, is there any signature on that page that you see? There is a handtekening, not with the thumbprint. 
Daim is... afdruk, of ek weet nie wat sy vinger hier af, uh, vinger afdruk is nie. Daim voorvinger, middelvinger, ek weet nie. Uh, there is a signature that just above the thumbprint, I cannot say it's the thumbprint, it's the middle finger, or which finger it is, but there is a signature above that. Normaal weg behoor al geskryf te wees wat sy finger afdruk daar gevat is. Normally it should be indicated there as to which particular finger was taken. I find it unwahrscheinlich that a getuie a thumbprint sal gee um, so ek weet nie of die handtekening by hierdie vingerafdruk dien as a getuie tot wie se vingerafdruk gevat is of nie. I also find it that for, for me it would be uh, improbable that a witness would uh, put his thumbprint and now there is a signature next to that thumbprint. I don't know whether that is now to witness uh, as to who's uh, finger that is uh, that is uh, printed on there. Nogoti futige ufagazi angati abesebega is to pasake na logo ge guindo in gabazi sayo, no goti futi gubesege saindwagi et duze wales to palais on as no goti low muntu yavu we are shown no mukaza guti uh umunyagaba niloya. So if from a mit all respect um a peri storium t t um um speaky leer u visa finger after kasir in visa anti kanangasir. Ek neem aan die handtekening wat lyk soos 'n Q en 'n X en daar geskrybbel is die Justice of the Peace. Dit is die Vrede Regters handtekening bloot op feit dat op die laaste blad sy daaiselfde handtekening bo die lynkie verskyn waar onder getik is Justice of the Peace signature. And so, uh, with all due respect now you are asking me to speculate with regard to this and uh, but uh, where that uh, there's that scribble uh, I just assume that that one would be now a signature belonging to the uh, justice of the peace because if you look at the last page just above where it's written signature of justice of the peace that signature is uh, above that lanage umcela nje noma uthi kuminake angi Angi Kabangel and Jenaman Kake leg, Oguti Ubani, Obesindala, Ubana, Obegis Tupa, Potagelag, Mati Konagi, Gunalum, Palo, Matu, O, Q, Noma X, and Kabang Guti, Lonagi, O, I tat is that Mendelis. So, ma'am, the purpose of this exercise, the reason for giving you that statement, is to compare your statement and the statement that is in front of you. That they are different. Totally different. Nee, met alle respect, ek weet nie wat u wil vergelijk en hoe sê u dit is verskillend nie. Hier so het persoon die verklaring onderteken met a duimafdruk. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I don't know what it is that uh, you find uh, to be different and what it is that you want to compare because here yeah, a statement, a person made a statement and confirmed that with a thumbprint. In my verklaring is dit bevestig dier die deposant by wijze van uh, uh, initial. And in my statement, it was then confirmed by the deponent by means of initialing. So, so die so deposante in hierdie geval het verskillende maniere ge gebruik om, om um, die verklaring te onderteken. Of dit nou een merk is, a handtekening is of a duim afdruk is. Uh, now in these two different uh, statements, the deponents made use of different means to confirm uh, their statements, whether it's by a mark, uh, by a signature, or by a thumb a print. Ma'am, sorry, please, can I uh, afford me to ask a question? This is your statement. This is the statement that was made in front of you. This one. This is correct. That is this correct. Is say 15. Dit is met ander woorde 6 van 6 heel onder. U sal sien heel boe. By my um, dokument het ek het basis so gemaak. You just see um, right at the top in my documents, that's how I marked them. That is now, that would be page 6. Yes. Yeah. Page so 6. 6 of 6. That's correct. 6 of 6. That's why I'm saying there's no signature of the deponent. Do nee, maar ons nog steeds een initial hier. So of hy nou sy thumbprint daar gesit het, volgeteken het, een kruisie gemaakt het, sy neesafdruk gesit het, hy het dit onderteken. Uh, now, but now there is an initial here. Whether he initialed, he put a cross, 
a thumbprint or his nose print, uh, but, but he did uh, put something there. Langage, Ugutige aga signedile, kotoage, begilege ama initials wake, nomage, begu ikala begile, noba is two pass begile, noma wenze ikros. I'm not talking about the, the, the initials, I'm talking about the signature. What is important is to inform the court that the statement was never signed. There's no signature of the deponent here in page 6. Nee, daar is nie een wetelijke vereiste dat hy sy volle handtekening moet gee op hierdie stadium daar nie. Ah. Hierso, het hy, hierso, is, hierso is, en ek weet nie eers wie dit gedoen het nie, hy weis vir my een bekentenis, ek weet nie wie sy bekentenis dit is nie, hy weis vir my een bekentenis vrede vrede vrederechter met een duim aftrek. Hy is tevrede met die duim aftrek, ah, ah. maar hy het een beswaar omdat die persoon nie in hierdie confessie of bekentenis van my een volle handtekening gemaakt het nie. Uh, here, sir, you are showing to me, oh, firstly, there is no legal requirement for a person to do that. You are showing me here a statement where a person has put down a thumbprint and you are satisfied with that. On my side, a person initialed and you are not satisfied with that. Thank but you. you are satisfied with the thumbprint. Maybe I misunderstood you, if you can just uh, put it uh, correctly or much clearer. Can you interpret it, please? Okay. So, which part now? All right, may I rephrase the question? Let's just rephrase the question. My question, very simple. At the end of the statement, page six, last page of the statement that you have taken, other than the alleged initials, mm -hmm. there is no signature of the deponent. That's what I'm asking. There is no full handtekening van the deposant. He is 100 percent right. correct. There is no signature of the uh, full signature of the deponent. We can see again on page six. We list some statement. I see. Are you correct? No matter sign deal and go put twelve. May I have that statement, please? Thank you very much on that exercise. Are you not handing out that document? Uh, Sir, are you not handing out that document? We... No, no, man. What's the value then of that if the court can't even see it? <laughs> Somebody's coming to testify on that statement, man. That's not the point. This is the witness who's being cross-examined on the two Can documents, that document, and I'm saying, are you not handing it up? That's all I want. I'm sorry, my lord, the time annexed charges were handed to the court. Mm. It's one of the annexed charges. I just want to confirm because I was not present okay. at that time. It's marked, J. what? It's marked. H, my lord. H, 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 H. So it's just a pro forma, my lord, I beg your pardon, because uh, the statement is part of the redacted parts. So may I reserve that for my argument <laughs> in the event a statement reserve, reserve, will... Reserve handing up the document. It's Sorry. just that the, your lordship will not have sight of the statement at yes, the moment. Uh, but think... if the if the court is inclined to look just at the back of the, just for the purpose of the exercise, to compare the last page of the the, the, the statement attached under H H and the statement attached under J J, only the the last part of the statement, not on the contents of the. I see your colleague here yeah, smiling, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Maloy. <laughs> we have the view that the entire document must be handed up. No. <laughs> no. Rather, let me withdraw the question and the document. Because and the, the document. Sorry, sorry. And the, the handing up of the document 
is predicated in support of your cross-examination of this witness where you said he must compare, she, sorry, she must compare the two documents, that is Exhibit JJ, and as she explained it, and the facsimile, which you say she must compare her confession together with the attachments on annexures to JJ. that very facsimile which you have handed over to her. My Lord, the, the, the issue is that a statement cannot, as per agreement, okay, with, whom? with whom? Between the parties. Oh, the state? Yes, that it cannot be handed over prior to the ruling in no, terms of I'm the No, I'm aware of that. Yes. But that's a, that statement, the one which you say belongs to some other person, yes. why can't this court have sight of it? Because you are using it for comparative, comparative reasons, are you not? I am, my lord. Yes, I'm aware. So you are saying, you are withdrawing the question now. Uh, uh, because I, when I'm consulting with my colleagues here, mm. I was not part of what was discussed. But if they discourage me to hand over the last page, because I indicated that only the last page for the sake of comparison, because it, 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 it consists of certain parts of the, of the statement. So that is the fear that my colleagues have for the court to have sight of. Yeah, this is a danger you undergo when you use a document which can only be disclosed to viewing after the court has, if it has, or if it does rule that, that statement was made freely and voluntary, etc. You are the one who opens the can of worms. No, it's fine. And yet you, all of you, you refuse me to, <laughs> to listen to an audio recording. It's not now us. You, you want me to view a statement, a statement. My Lord is the law, it's not us. <laughs> May I withdraw this? this no, no, you, it's your choice. May I, 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 I would like to withdraw it, but that will be subject of my argument. May I withdraw the last part of my question in relation to the... So the last part of your question is withdrawn? On page six of the accused statement. Okay. But I'm happy that the witness has consent has confirmed that there's no signature of there's no signature of the deponent. But if you say you've withdrawn that last part of the question, then her answer also. And the answer uh, not not the consequential answer, on your saying you're withdrawing it. The comparison you're actually saying the court should not take that answer which was elicited by your last question. But Man, and to by this witness. May you're I saying basically my that May I clarify this? Okay. I'm withdrawing the comparison of both statements, but I'm not withdrawing the question that there is no signature of the deponent on the statement she has made. That's what I'm withdrawing, the comparison of the statements, but not the answer she has already tendered before this court. And you're saying you're not going to hand up the document? The document would be handed over at a later stage Mr. Barry, what's your reaction? Oh. Well, I suppose my, my colleague uh, is, is, is in charge. Um, if he withdraws the comparison, then, um, yeah, it, the, it means his questions and answers are now um, off, off the record. A pronoun scripto, basically. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Mgumezuru. All right. Ma'am, let, let me have that statement that I gave you, the last statement that I gave you, so that I can safely put it on record, so that I can put it on record that in that statement that you have, 
that you took from the deponent, there's no signature. This, that's the last question on the aspect of the signature. There's no signature. Can you confirm that there's no signature? It's only the initials. Dit is net die initials soos wat jy sê op die laaste blad sy en op elke blad sy soos wat het verkeerd tot en met daai um, um, waar hy sê dat the statement is now signed by the department by means of his signature is his signature ten volle aangebring. Yes, there is no signature from that a page as you say as well as the other pages up until the page that the witness is now referring to page 8. Ne? Uh, is where it says now it now uh, his signature is now on. Yeah, but we can also go to the page of the initial I beg you to pay up signature to page of the Nagy statement. Yeah, uh, to be got up the graphic page of page eight. La con Nagy as a sign your con. Sorry, you prefaced your answer by saying by reading the notation. I said you understand. Is a uh, oh, blood says. Dat is a Ach, Bore, soos wat die verrichtinge plaase vind het ja, ja, no, 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 voor my, ja. het al die verrichtinge eers plaas gevind. Dit That's sluit it. in die voorvereistes en toe die eets verklaring. That's it. Waarna hy gevra is om dan sy volle handtekening te bring en elke blad sy te initial. That's it. Hierdie blad sy acht, het ek aanvankelijk op hierdie verklaring wat ek oorhandig het, heel achtergehaald. Right. Dit is, lijkt my teruggeskyf na sy oorspronkelijke plek toe, so, selfs die, die certificaat van die top was jou achtergesit. Right. So, ja, ten opzichte van blad sy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 en 6 van die verklaring self van die voorval, van die beweerde voorval, is daar net initials. Right, yeah. Nie een volle handtekening okay. nie. And then on page 8? En dan die ander ook net initials en dan die laaste blad sy wat ek beskou na aanleiding van die verrichtinge afgeloop het, een volle handteken. Die laste bladse, according to you, volgens die verrichtinge wat plaase vind het voor yeah. my. Which, what is the last page? Uh, bladse 8, page volgens die documenten soos wat het op die pure formas gemerkt is. Bladse 8. Page yeah. 8 is, a and you say, there is a signature. There is a volle handteken. Which is preceded by what? Can you understand me? Did you sign because it says, having made the statement, he, that's De, what I understood you. Just put it on record, ma'am. That's correct. I yes? get na die tyd, um, to alles afgeneem is gesê, teken, volle handtekening, hy het het geteken, die volle handtekening, en ek het vir hom ook gevraag om die, um, elke blad sy te initial, wat hy ook gedoen het. Uh, after the completion of uh, the proceedings, I then requested him to sign, which he did, and then requested him uh, to initial each uh, page, which he also did. Okay. So in page 8, I think it's referring to page 8 of the proforma. Now, is it not of the statement? The and statement consists of six pages. Six pages, yeah, okay. The proforma consists of nine pages, if I'm not mistaken, or eight pages, nine. or if not nine. Yeah. Okay. I forgot. The process where it afgelopen is for me was not that the question is taken in a iets. Uh, advocate, the process as it unfolded before me, it was not to such and to the extent that you were just asked to sign each and everything. Yeah. Da was met ander woorde nie gehandel met die voorvereistes en toestel handtekeninge aangebring. Okay. Uh, for an example, it was not the prerequisites that were dealt with and then thereafter uh, asking for signatures. In the lage ook wens ek aan gai wapu se u guti u kale kale at hazel wege u guti for me hambara jan bese guya trail wapu guti assign ne, yeah? Die voorvereistes is hanteer Daarna het ons oorgegaan op die confessie. Okay, the prerequisites were handled or dealt with. Thereafter, we moved to the confession. Spalege, nga logo okona bevorm lang apambili, sa se se anvule la raksoon is dat mende. En nada die confessie gemaakt is, is, het hy sy volle handtekening aangebring, dit is die handtekening op blad sy 8, en het hy elke blad sy geparafeer. Now, after the completion of the confession, he was then requested to sign, that is now the signature which he brought on, on page 8. Thereafter, requested to initial each page. So the way you must say, grab a secret, you go palace on the statement, you go to assign the, you assign the corner, go page 8, but say, tell her, go to be my initials with page in Ghana. May I just put this question? The signature that appears on page 8 is in dispute. 
Page they accused, page they accused left that office without appending a signature to any of the documents that were in front of him. I have a rhetoric question. Wie zou dan namens hom geteken het? Want ek sê vir u nou, hierdie man het geteken voor my, voor sy prokureer en voor die tolk. Ok, I'm now en, going to, sorry, I'm going to ask you a rhetoric question. Who would have then now signed uh, in his uh, space or in this place? Because this gentleman signed in, in the presence of his, uh, of his legal representative, in the presence of the interpreter. Um, the interpreter. As well as this legal representative can now uh, attest to that if it is now that uh, you are disputing that which I am saying. Die band waar die procedure volledig uiteensit nie toegelaat is vir redes op rekord nie. Uh, taking into account that uh, the, the recording which now recorded the proceedings was not uh, uh, admitted uh, uh, in uh, court or as part of evidence. Lana again. Okay, may I just put this question? Before, I just, can you please read, before the alleged signature, there's a sentence on page 8. Is that part of the statement, sir? Uh, the performer, my lord, sorry. Oh, it's not the part of the statement. The performer. The performer, okay. In page 8. Yeah, because I'm entitled legally to have the sight of the performer. Thank you, my lord. The statement is now signed by the department by means of his signature. The uh, statement is now signed by the department by means of his signature. This black side is written now all is afgelopen. This page was signed after everything had been done. Page Toe het hy volledig geteken, die tolk het volledig geteken, en ek het volledig geteken, en die tijd van completion van hierdie hele verrichting was 20 minuten oor 5 die middag. He signed in full, the interpreter signed in full, I then signed, and then the time of completion of these entire proceedings was 20 past 5. La nage, uye nage, owa sign dage, eh, futige i document lena i sign doe, emu vako kuti konke se gwenzi wese kreti wege. So hierdie handtekeninge is nie afgeneem na completion van die verrichtinge van die proforma forum nie. Dit is gedoen nadat die proforma forum voltooi is tot in plaats sy 7 en die confessie afgeneem is en hy gefraas toe om te teken. Now this signature, which is which appears on page eight, was not uh, appended uh, after the completion of the performer. It was after the uh, the performer was done uh, up to page. You said page seven. Yes. seven, yes, and then the confession was taken was okay. taken down, and then uh, it was only then after it had been completed when he now appended his signature on page eight. Right. Okay, Procureer ook moet steken nie. I didn't see uh, the need or see it necessary for the lawyer to also sign. Ang zang ek bon ek ek is tingo ek ek to me dinaie a sign. But if he signed, it was going to be much easier to see that he was present on that day. Do you agree? Meneer, ek het... Sorry ma'am, if he signed, if the attorney, as you say, he was present on that day, if he signed, that's just a general question. Meneer, if he signed, 
Al het hierdie man geteken, sou u nog steeds in licht van die omstandighede dit ontken het. Ek het hier opgeteken, dat hierdie man teenwoordig was meneer Njiaku, en u glo dit nie. Ek glo nie dat enige handtekening eers een verskil sou maak nie. Even if, sorry sir, even if he had signed, you would still, under the circumstances, you would still have disputed it. Because I wrote here, Mr. Dominic Mjiako, but still, you are still not taking my word. So I don't see that any signature would have made a difference. Sy Fidelity Fund certificate nummer is hier neergeskryf en nog steeds aanvaar hier dit nie, want dit is die opdracht. Ek respecteer die opdracht, maar die feit bly staan. As u wil voorgeer dat enige verdere handtekeninge een verskil sou maak, dan is die antwoord nee, want u en die klient sou dit nie aanvaar het nie. I respect the fact that it is your instruction, but I am saying to you that no any other sick teacher would have made a difference here because you and your clients would not have accepted that. Ukuthi ke umjiyako ngabe usayindile lana angibona ukuthi bekuzokwenza umehluko lokho ngoba ke nansi ke nenamba yakhe ke yefidelity efans ibhaliwe lapha kodwa ke nalapho nalokho awukwamukeli ukuthi nokuthi ke ilokho okutshela umsola ngiyakuhlona iphake kodwa angibona ukuthi nje isignature enye ibizokwenza umehluko kule document May I just put my vision the vision of the accused because I can see that nothing on this pro forma that has been attached that one may conclude that an attorney was present at the time of the... But let me just put the version of the accused. When he was brought to you, mm -hmm. before he was brought to you, mm -hmm. I know you were not present. It's going to be a, 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 it's not going to be a fair question because you were not present at that time when the alleged torture was okayed or was conducted on, on the accused. But my, my instruction before you descend on that box is to tell you that he was subjected to a severe assault, severe torture in four different places before he was brought to you to make such a confession. Advocate, Can you comment on that? Yeah. Advocaat, hierdie man het op verskye kere, op verskye weise smijt te kennis gegeer dat hy nie aangerand was nie. I advocate that this gentleman uh, made it uh, known to me on uh, several uh, uh, occasions uh, in several ways that he was not assaulted. Lomlisage wang chelage, amasanjage, nange chelage, iti ze kukuti agakaze, ashaywe. Geen beserings is, dat ek net laat praat, geen beserings is genutileer nie, waar geneem dier my nie, toe ek vir my gevraag het, het hy enige beserings, kan hy dit uitwees, is geen beserings dier hom aan my uitgewees. Behalwe ou merke, wat reeds, gezond geword het ten opzichte van voorval wat hy opgedoen het met sy ouma toe hy een kind was. No injuries were shown or pointed out to me or were visible to me even when I had asked him about those or such injuries he referred me or pointed or mentioned to me old wounds or injuries that occurred or was as a result of an incident between himself and his grandmother when he was still very young Agukho kuklimala awangbonsa kona noma awakusho kumina futhi ke nokulimala angijengisa kona noma akhuluma ngako ila athi walimala khona esemncane kakhulu kwesihlakalo esasihlanganisa yena ke nokoko wakhe Daar was geen rede hoekom hy dit nie vir my kon rapporteer nie daar was geen rede as hy nog beserings gehad het wat veroorsaak was deur aanranding deur die polisie of deur enige iemand aan my kon uitwys nie There was no reason uh, that uh, uh, he preferred to me or that uh, he should not have uh, appointed or shown me or told me about those uh, injuries or injuries that he had at the stage or that were caused by police on him. And in licht daarvan dat u sê, hy op drie of vier geleentere, soos wat u dit noem, en ek al aan severely assaulted was, vind ek dit baie vreemd, dat hy dit nie vir my sou noem, tenminste nie. 
I find it very strange uh, what you just mentioned now that, uh, as you said, mm. that uh, on three or four uh, different occasions that uh, he would at least not have mentioned it to me. We are manga zag, Ugut Nanjama Usho, Gutil, and Bissaga, Washayo, Agamasanza, Asugile, Amatat, and Mamasanza, Man, Ugutinje, Aragaz, and Je, Angele, Galok. All right. <clears throat> and you'll agree with me that you can dispute that, it's fine. I'm just putting the version of the accused. Whether you believe it or not, it's fine. But what would be your take? You are handcuffed. And as per your words in the pro forma, you said they, the police were heavily, heavily armed. Psychologically, did not that have manipulated his mental ability? I know you are not a doctor, but psychologically, on the observation, here are the police. Uh, uh, <coughs> heavily armed. so antwoord. Een is raag ek is nie 'n mediese praktisyn of 'n sielkundige om te weet wat die sielkundige uitwerking het, het op 'n persoon wat daar staan met boeie aan nie. Maar hier die man het glad nie voorgekom as iemand wat vreesagtig is. Uh, sir, you are right uh, that I am not a medical uh, practitioner uh, and uh, I also don't know as to what the psychological effect thereof would be. But uh, this gentleman, uh, as he was uh, there, he didn't appear as someone who was uh, fearful. He appeared calm. Hij was baie rustig geweest. Hij baie rustig gepraat met mij. Uh, he was very relaxed and he was even relaxed when he spoke to me. Hij was begeerig om te praat. Uh, he, 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 he really he wanted to talk. Hij heeft um, um, zelfs die boeie aan zijn handen was los. Dit het geklink soos een vrou wat los bangles draad. Dit was los om zijn gewrichte. Uh, even uh, the handcuffs were loose. Uh, they, would, they sounded like a, a lady uh, who was having uh, bangles around her because uh, they were loose in his arms. Toe ek met hom gepraat het en vir hom gevraad hoe gaan dit? In die begin, toe hy daar in die kantoor in gekom het, het hy my, ek, ek het hom gegroet, hy het my teruggegroet, hy het, ek het hom gevra gaan het, hy het vir my gesê, dit gaan baie goed dankie, hy het in teenheel vir my teruggevra, hoe gaan het met my, en ek het gesê, goed. Yes. So hierdie man het nie voorgekom, soos enige persoon wat vreesachtig was, bang was, beangst was, aangerand was, niks nie. Uh, and as I entered there, uh, I greeted him, I asked him how he was, uh, he responded to me and he even asked me back as to how, how I was and as this gentleman was there, never appeared to be someone who was fearful, uh, someone who was uh, uh, anxious. In teendeel, die enigste antwoord wat hy vir my gegeet het, het jylle by ooreenkomst uitgehaal uit die vereistes uit. En dit was glad nie een refleksie op die politie gewees. Of iets wat hulle sou doen nie. And it is only, there is one thing that he told me, but it is one of those redacted versions, uh, one of those that you redacted, and it was never anything that pointed uh, to the police. Con or what they did. Sorry? Or what they did. Kunye nje kotwa ke awang chela kona ke kotwa ke ngeeshwa, kuyi ngenye ya loku ke eniti ke nye kela kukuti anga fundu wake noma ke niksuli lege la kwe statement lege, kotwa loko ben kwa nga siyona nje inkomba kuma poisa noma loko aba kwenza. Ok. I hear what you are saying. On all what we are saying, the, these police officers who we, which you took, I think one of them you said is Lissareng, something like that. 
according to my 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 my, my instruction is that all that was happening there it happened in the presence of the police. I think two or three police that were there. It is Mukhano and other two metropolis officers. Do you dispute that? As you see, all that was happening there. Can any taking the, take, sorry, no, taking the, the confession, completing the the, the performer, not the assault. As kis, can I get your dialogue cry or die frog? All that was happening there took place in the presence of the people that you got in room two is is that now is the bewering of us any contour gives to your verrichting applause is the allegation that they were in the office when these proceedings were underway the instruction I clarity i don't understand the instruction is that when you took or when you conducted this uh, interview, it was conducted in the presence of the police, including Mr. Mohano. My question is, do you dispute that? Because okay. other police officers were roaming around outside the, the office in the passage, as per your evidence. Ontken ek daai bewering. Die klient weet dat uh, die enige tijd wat meneer Liesering en Jonathan in die kantoor was, was raag aan die begin geweest toe hulle, hulle aanstellingscertificaat afskrifte vir my gegee. Oké, okay, dank uh, Abs Advocate, I absolutely deny uh, that, uh, that instruction from your client. Your uh, client knows very well that that is not true. The only time that Mr. Lissering as well as Jonathan were in the office, it was right at the beginning when they uh, came to give, uh, to, to give me their appointment certificates. We are going to go to and then Sergeant Muhane then gave me his uh, particulars or his name and surname as well as certificate. It was after the deponent had given me his particulars, his name and surname, uh, his date of birth, and thereafter he was out of the office. And then it the question ten opzichte van die procureur ter sprake gekom, die uh, deposant het die procureur uitgewees, dis sy procureur, uh, gesê die procureur moet homself voorstel, procureur het het gedoen ensovoorts, en um, die verrichting het de aanvang geneem. Nie enige van hierdie twee persoene, wie se aanstellingscertificate hier aan is, of hierdie sergeant Mogani was in die kantoor gewees, and then the question of uh, uh, the legal Darnoy. representative or the attorney then came up. Uh, that's when the deponent introduced or pointed out the uh, gentleman as being his attorney, and the attorney uh, confirmed that. And uh, when that happened, uh, none of these uh, two gentlemen that uh, you mentioned, or uh, Jonathan and Lissering, as well as Mukhan, were in the office when that happened. And and I don't know how it is that he saw the movements outside because I couldn't see that because that particular door was closed and everyone was already out. And that stage 
uh, I was uh, had already been informed by Sergeant Mohane that uh, the members, uh, the Metro Police members that were in the passage, that they were gone, they were no longer there anymore. Galasus Katig and Gasem Jelly were here in Mohan, Oguti Lava, the Metropolis, Ababe Corner, Lapi Passage in Babe Sebengeko, Behambile. In the Dari Tait, that was to act from Freud, was the Anna means a subsonder yeda, what act do that mere gedeal was. So, to Susan Mohani, I can two right is, Koni and Fanons, dear I dear sin of dear Mir Sini. That was too obvious. And it was now at that stage when I was then asking about uh, the documents of the others when he uh, informed me about that. And after Sergeant Mohane was out of the office, that door was closed. And uh, we couldn't so see through the door or through the, uh, the wall. And Gales was cut in the sog and Jello Loco, Gabo Gutige, Umuhan, and Gang in Booze Guti, Agupi Ama documents Abanye, Ila and Jello Con Guti Bahambi Lege. Utel Muhan is a Pumilege officini, Ustrapa Sasvali, Sasngeges Bonengali, Westrapa Nomangali, Kotong. I can to a right of Hanit? Some at Site Procurier, Vietak after Nivarium Stanak here at Avas in Wide of a wider snake. And uh, when he left the office together with his uh, attorney, I don't know what the circumstances were now there, around there, and to how he was taken away from there. Masa Pumagi, Noma is a Pumilio office in Ganino Meluake, Ugutua Hanchi Saganjani, who sold up and was locked. Want to act at Stop was a Niman Tenikong Bove, my Fred Duplessini. Because when I walked out, there was no one in the passage except Mrs. Duplessy. One Yako Muntu get a passage among Puma Min and a Pancho Waka or Mrs. Duplessy. Then you. you ask uh, the deponent whether he wanted to take a bath. Do you remember saying that? I get for him for the as I can have the document. If you go to the document, I explained to him. Um, na blad say, let me look at the right blad say, so. Blad say, in the four blad say. Page one. Yes. So just to give me a moment. Good. Page four. Van paragraph eight. Paragraph eight. Yes. Good. I get from Doi Frau Frau. And I can I come out and yes, or can I read it in that question? Yes, please. Good. I get from Frau. Um, from the above mentioned questions and answers, it appears to me that the deponent, um, I, Sorry. that's a finding that Sorry, I made. Just a second. I just need to confirm if it has been redacted. It hasn't been redacted. No, yeah, not the redacted. You can read it. Um, I get on the phone. 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 I get on the uh, there is that instruction there asking about the special request. So I basically asked him if, if he had any special request. In so far my is to fry for my shoes what? And uh, as far as I can recall, he then asked me something like uh, wang, wang buzage, yes. Misschien een bad, ik weet niet wat je uh, behoefte is of wat je nodig hebt niet, als een voorbeeld. And then I mentioned to him, uh, maybe a bath. I don't know what your need is or what it is, uh, just uh, as an example. Waar zijn die tegen naar een plantje ook eens aan? En als we dit doen, we zullen zien. Waar na ik gezegd, I request a bath to contact my family and have an exchange of clothes and to call my child. And the reason why I'm going to go to the bath is because I've heard from my husband 
dat hy van die 16e juni af nie gebaat het nie. So logika sê vir die mens, as jy van die 16e af sê, jy het nie gebaat nie, en daar word vir jou gevra, wat sy behoeftes jy dalk het, kan dit dalk een van die behoeftes wees. Ek het om gevra, dis nie noodwendig, dat hy dit gehad het nie, of moes gehad het nie, en dit was die antwoord gewees wat hy gegeen. And the reason for me asking that, it was based on what he had told me previously, that he hadn't taken a path since the 16th of June 2020, so now logic tells you that if someone hadn't taken a path from or for such a long time, so that is basically what I had asked him. Kukuti ke logo ngembuzu kuti kwa sasi inisti ngosaki na mage ngoba wa ingi chalulege nga pambili nukuti kusuka nge skati ke nga gaze akeze nge i 16 zika chun. Lana ke futi oku nye abe kshilo ukuti nga atrela na mage atrela ke ngtrela ukuti nkeze ukuti ke ngi kumani nomde ni wami futi ke ya ngshinje impasi weze ngi kogile nukuti futi was that a direct communication between yourselves and the deponent or was it interpreted through an interpreter? I had to ask him 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 and to ask him to ask him to ask him to ask him As far as I can remember, I asked him directly uh, the interpreter interpreted that and then he, uh, he responded and it was re, uh, interpreted back. Kumbula ka shege uguti ngabu za yenage utoliga wase ekumusha age logo wang pendula age wase futi upinde utoliga ekumusha futi. Even the statement that was taken was it interpreted? Sorry, what language was it? It was mentioned to me that I was a Zulu speaking. Ngajelwa ugutige ukuluma isi Zulu. There's some way where you indicated that the the deponent had has a heart problem. Can you recall that in your pro forma? That's correct. That's what I might mean. Had you heard? That's correct. That's what you informed me. Ugutige wai ne inclu wai ne king again inclusio into aya ang chela yo na leyo. Did you bother to ask the nature of his illness, the extent or the condition at that time when he was before you, whether he need medical attention or not? Nia. Ang no, ang zang egen gimbuze egen naman gane kabanzi egen gimbuze ngaloko naman funyo kwa fisu kwa zige. In the rede da ofu raiti kasi ay het nog steeds a hard problem ni ay ay fri ofu kasi ofu mai kasi ay het yen a gehad he had one like in the past, not have one or has one like in the present. As ay fri mai kasi dat ay nog steeds yen a het dan sa ek het vader gevat het. If he had indicated that he still, or that he still had that problem, then I would have taken it further. Also, guti ge waeti inkiga ge leyo ana yo ge ngale soskati wa inchel guti kuagu into aye na yonga pamblin umagu guti wa inchel guti ge kuagu sakubega ge ngangi zokwenza ge ngangi zokwenza ge sa ge guti kona ge o o kwenza ge nomen kwenza. Okay, <clears throat> before I conclude my cross-examination, I just want to ascertain myself if the aspects that, oh, okay. <clears throat> May I approach Akis Namaki? Yes, yes, yes.
Thank you, my lord, for your indulgence. That concludes my cross-examination. Okay. God Thank Jesus. you. Any re-examination? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Not, not that. Yeah. Not that. What's your time there? It's almost half past, but I think we can finish with the witness. It's half past three. 26 past three. 26 past three? Yes. You want us to continue? Yes, uh, I think we can okay. finish with the witness. Okay. Mr. Nisi, any questions? Learned friends have got cross-examination. Maybe we can stand down until Monday. The witness has said she can still spare some time on, so? on Monday. So let her reflect about for you on Monday up dag. I did met of the tijd gedoen word en so gauw as moontlik want and invoke their constitutional rights to silence. The state adduced evidence in order to discharge its owners to prove its case against the accused. During the course of this adducement of evidence, the prosecutor then decided to lead evidence which related to what he terms statements, confessions, warning statements, and or oh, pointing out. And it is at that stage that the defense contested the admissibility of all these uh, so-called confessions, statements, pointing outs, and proffered to this court certain reasons which are on record. Because there is a dispute regarding the fact whether the alleged confessions were freely and voluntarily made in terms of Section 217 of the Criminal Procedure Act without coercion and torture, this court then declared that a trial within a trial should be held. in order to adjudicate the contention by the state that, which alleges that such statements pointing out and or warning statements were made freely and voluntarily whilst the defense adhered to the fact that that was not the case. The states then called Magistrate Cornier as its witness in the trial within a trial because she apparently is the person who presided over the alleged statement or confession which was allegedly made by accused number two. Prior to that, obviously, the state also had called 
Colonel Mboto, who was also alleged to be the scribe who presided over the alleged confession allegedly made by accused number one. Now, Mr. Mnisi addressed this court and stated that in his view, there should also be a trial within a trial in relation to the admissibility of the audio recording which was made by Magistrate Cronier when she was <coughs> presiding over the Section 217 interview in respect of accused number two. My view is that Maybe I should commence by saying the defense, the defense was given an opportunity by Mr. Baloui, the prosecutor, to listen to the alleged audio recording which was made by Magistrate Cronier. This emanates from the fact that after Ms. Cronier, Magistrate Cronier had given evidence and before she was cross-examined, the state, through the aegis of Mr. Baloi, had indicated that it was in possession of an audio recorded tape, but had stated in court that the state was not going to utilize same and try and admit it to the evidence in the trial within the trial. Subsequent to the state changing its mind, and that occurred after the defense had had the opportunity of listening to the tape, the state then said it would appear that uh, in order to bolster its case, it intends utilizing that uh, audio tape and introducing it to evidence because Mr. Baloi stated that it appeared that the allegations regarding the questions and answers which were elicited and presided over by me Magistrate Cronier, in what is termed the pro forma form, format, which is structured on nine pages and 15 paragraphs, where the information which predicates and precedes the admissibility of a confession or statement has to be argued before this court after the elicitation of evidence and counter rebuttal evidence by the accused. Consequently, To accommodate the concern of Advocate Nisi, I there and then said 
because the precursor, as he tamed, he tames it, is not apparent to him. To this court, it was apparent in that that precursor is predicated on the fact that the defense is alleging that the rights of accused number two were violated, the rights, the constitutional rights of number two, accused number two were violated in that when this tape or audio tape was made by Magistrate Cronier, she never sought the consent of accused number two, neither did she seek to advise or inform accused number two in the presence of his attorney that she intends recording the section 217 interview and also she intends recording the statement, alleged statement or confession allegedly made by accused number two. The contrary is that Mr. Baloi states that even though the the recording, the audio recording was made according to him it was within the state's right to present that evidence. Consequently then, because there is a dispute of, regarding the admissibility of the audio recording, this court, because of the fact that there is no dispute from Mr. Baloi representing the state that Ms. Magistrate Cronier never ever told accused number two that he intends recording the section 217 pro forma question and answer and also that she intended recording the subsequent allegedly made statement by accused number two. Now, this court has inherent jurisdiction to invoke the Constitution peremptorily actually in fact the invocation of section 35 where the rights of accused persons are encapsulated and enshrined. In this instance the court found it not expedient when there is no dispute about the fact that this recording of the section 217 interview at, presided by Magistrate Cronier the state alleges that it is lawfully acquired and the contrary the defense alleges that it was unlawfully acquired but as I say, because there's no dispute about the fact that it was recorded without the consent and without the informing the accused, this court must determine whether the Constitution in that regard or the rights of accused number two enshrined in uh, Section 35 were violated as argued by the defense counsels here. Now, since the establishment of a democratic state in South Africa 
and the adoption of the Constitution 106 of 1996. South African courts are enjoined by Section 35 of the Constitution to interpret and promote the values which underlie an open and democratic society based on freedom and equality. And where applicable to have regard to relevant public international law and also to permit the section 35.5 permits our courts to have regard to comparable foreign law. Kentridge Advocate Kentridge, SC Queen's Council, <laughs> wrote a seminal principle into the jurisprudence of South Africa when he stated that because we, our constitution is also based on a Bill of Rights, criminal trials in South Africa and criminal appeals should be conducted in accordance with the notions of basic fairness and justice. In the case of Wong Kem Ming versus R, 1980, AC 247, PC 261, Lord Halisham stated the following underlying principles. Any civilized system of criminal jurisprudence must accord to the judiciary some means of excluding confessions or admissions obtained by improper methods. This is not only because of the potential unreliability of such statements, but also and perhaps mainly because in a civilized society it is vital that persons in custody or charged with offenses should not be subjected to all to ill treatment or improper pressure in order to extract a confession. It is therefore of very great importance that courts should continue to insist that before extrajudicial statements can be admitted in evidence, the prosecution must be made to prove beyond reasonable doubt that the statement was not obtained in a manner which would be reprobated and was therefore in the truest sense voluntarily. <clears throat> in the case of R versus Tamani and others, 1925 AD, <coughs> Ennis, who was then the Chief Justice of South Africa, stated that it is an established principle in our law that no one can be compelled to give evidence incriminating himself. He cannot be forced to do either that before the trial or during the trial. The principle comes to, through to us through English law and its roots go back in history. Wigmore, in his book on evidence, volume four, five, sorry, in page 2,220, traces very accurately the genesis and indicates the limits of the privilege. And he, he shows that however important the doctrine may be, it is necessary to confirm it within the proper limits what the rule forbids is compelling a man to give evidence which incriminate himself. 
Now, it is the norm in uh, trials within a trial for the state to present its evidence and for the defense to present counter evidence or countervailing evidence in a rebuttal of the state's evidence. Now, in this case, sorry, sorry. This court has to decide whether the audio tape recording, when it was made by Magistrate Cronier, resulted in the invasion of accused number two's privacy and dignity, and that consequently the said audio recording evidence brought whether the said recorded the recorded evidence by this tape under the direction of Magistrate Cronier, if it is admitted into evidence, can it be said that it would bring the administration of justice into disrepute and that also it would be said to be an infringement of accused number two's rights to a fair trial. The government of the accused submissions, counsel submissions, is that the reception of the impugned evidence which is encapsulated in this audio recorded tape, would violate the accused fundamental rights enshrined in Section 35 of the Constitution. The question is whether it could be argued that this tape can be said to be lawfully made in view of the fact that Ms. Conger, the maker, was acting in the course and scope of his capacity as a magistrate who is presiding on behalf of the prosecution. In my view, invoking the inherent jurisdiction that I have and following the towering words of Kentridge, if the flouting of the Constitution is so egregious and flagrant, should this court wait until there is rebuttal evidence from accused number two regarding the fact that all he could say is that I never gave consent and I was never asked and I never knew that this tape, this interview was taped. And because of the concession by the state and it doesn't even dispute it that this tape was made in the course and scope of uh, the taking of the 217 statement. This court has all the evidence regarding that exigency of legality. And in terms of section 145, subsection 4C of the Criminal Procedure Act, this court is been joined to decide that legal exigency without, without waiting for accused number one, two, three,
three, four, five, to give evidence in a trial within a trial when there is an egregious, according to me, an egregious flouting so flagrant that why should this court allow it to contaminate the evidence? Consequently, the reasoning this court utilizes is the following. The accused has a right to a fair trial, and what infuses its purpose is for justice to be done and to be seen to be seen to be done. In considering for a purpose the purpose of this case before court. This principle lies at the heart of a fair trial in the field of criminal justice. One has to bear in mind that dignity and freedom and equality are fundamental values of the Constitution. And these are important to the right to fair trial and to ensure adequately that innocent people are not wrongly convicted. And however, there are other elements and rights, such as the presumption of innocence, which cannot be explained exclusively on the basis of averting a wrong conviction, but which arise primarily primarily together with the right to privacy. See in this regard the case of the Director of Economic Affairs and others versus Hyundai, Motor Distributors, PTY, LTD and others, 2002, SACR 349. Sorry. In my view, the submission by Mr. Baloi that the inception and monitoring bill is applicable in this case, I beg to differ with him. It is not. When we investigate the reasons advanced by Magistrate Rongier for making that audio recording during the Section 217 interview, she stated that she recorded the same for her own personal safety and because she has a penchant for recording any of her duties when she is at work and where there is no recording devices. But the point is, this recorder was made during the course and scope of, his, of her employment as a presiding magistrate in a section 217 interview. Consequently, she may be laboring under the bona fide incorrect impression that she owns that tape. She doesn't.
So it is common cause that accused number two was not apprised of his constitutional rights by Ms. Magistrate Grenier. And this relates only to the audio visual, audio recorded tape. It doesn't relate to the section 217 completion of the question and answer pro forma format document which was handed in as exhibit JJ. This, the remarks which I'm making relate only to the recorder and the making of the audio video, sorry, of the auto recording, not to the Viva Voke evidence which was visited upon by Mrs. Cronjier when she was engaging in the interview with accused number two. Consequently, in my view, I, I have to determine whether, despite the fact that accused number two was not apprised of his rights, and consequently, in my view, he was not informed whether she would acquiesce to the audio recording of the entire section 217 interview and also of the alleged statement or confession which accused number two made. This court, in terms of the law, it's entitled to be furnished with a pro forma format document when the maker, sorry, when the, when Mrs. Cronje, for instance, was engaging accused number two in the interview in terms of section 217. Correspondingly, one would also imagine that this court was entitled to listen to the recorded pro forma questions one to 13 of the audio recording. But the defense objected and said that this court will only, <laughs> will only be indulged by the defense to listen to the tape after I have made a finding either way. That is not the law. I'm entitled. The court is entitled to listen because we now find ourselves in this invidious position that the defense has listened to the entire tape. And I'm saying I, mean, I was entitled to listen for the, to the tape from the inception of the interview right up to paragraph 13. Mr. Balawi also has listened to the tape. The accused also have listened to the tape. And the curious oddity is that the judge who is supposed to adjudicate this matter was disbarred by the defense from listening to the tape. That, that was <laughs> an ill-conceived and unlawful But that, as it may, this court still has to deliver this judgment.
I wish to differ with Mr. Baloui when he says the recorder, taped recorder of the section one two in interview and even of the alleged statement or confession made by accused number two is merely the basis of an electronic version of the pro forma question and answer that is exhibit JJ. I beg to differ. Mr. Baloy himself advised this court that there is a difference between what is annotated in the pro forma document, the question and answer document, and what was deciphered when listening to the recording are two different versions, according to Baloui, in that this is what persuaded him because of the extra information which he gleaned from the tape, that he should adumbrate and bring an application to tender that evidence before this court. In order for the state to supplement the evidential material in the pro forma question and answer, which was completed by Magistrate Grenier, because certain details might not have appeared on the pro forma format question and answer, but are contained in the recording, which is the basis, as he says, of merely an electronic version of the pro forma question. No, it is not. For the following reasons. Sorry, Tom. about that, I just...
Sorry. Yeah. Yes, for the following reasons. In that, if Mr. Baloy admits that uh, the court now is confronted with two versions of the interview of the section 217 interview presided over by Mrs. Oh, Magistrate Congier, it means that we have the original real evidence and the supplementary evidence, which is derivative evidence and not conscriptive evidence, as recorded by Mrs. Grongier. And despite the injunction in the case of Key versus the Attorney General of the Transvaal, the judgment by Chrysler 1996 in the Constitutional Court that sometimes the interests of justice and the administration of justice would be relaxed to allow that evidence which is unlawfully and unconstitutionally acquired be made admissible in a court of law. But in this instance, I'm of the view that I demur and say this cannot be done because of the egregiousness of the infraction of accused number two's rights. And further, I've already said that It is not in the interest of justice for this court to wait for the whole evidence to be laid before this court in a full throttle in a full throttle in a full throttle application with rebuttal evidence and thereafter come to a decision because of the fact that, as we all know, decisions which, or rulings which are made in, on admissibility in trials within a trial, those decisions are interlocutory and may later be reviewed. See in this regard, R versus Mosikiwa and others, 1965, 3SA 529, SRA, a judgment of McDonald AJP, where at 530J it was said, it is important to bear in mind that a ruling of admissibility is not final. Relevant evidence led in the main trial may be taken into account by the judge or magistrate when reviewing his decision on admissibility, no matter what the source of such relevant evidence might be. There is no reason why this should not also be the position with regard to when a trial within a trial is held. And another point is that in S versus Mochindu, 2002, SACR 313, which was rent. Schulz, as he then was, at 3161, stated that a ruling on admissibility in a trial within a trial is interlocutory and may be reviewed at the end of the trial in the light of later evidence. S versus Mkwanazi, 1991, 1, SA 736A, this principle, in fact, shows that subsequent evidence in the main trial may decisively alter or affect 
the determination of the issues in the trial within the trial. But in this case, I want the view that uh, <coughs> the accused number two's right to a trial to a a fair trial were infringed by the making of the audio the recording by the magistrate Ronger. And consequently, as from the time the, the accused number two's rights were infringed in that manner, this court doesn't have to speculate that perhaps Mr. the accused number two would have later said he doesn't mind that these Section 217 proceedings were recorded. But this court is enjoined to declare evidence which was acquired unconstitutionally to be inadmissible, as I'm doing about the very recorder of the Section 217 interview from its beginning to its end. Because if this court allowed such an egregious flouting and flagrant flouting of accused number two's constitutional rights in terms of section 35.5, it would not be in the interest of justice to do so because accused number two would then be continuously subjected to a trial unfairly when we know that the Constitution engages us and enjoins us to prevent such an exigency. And also, in the view of this court, that would be that would bring the administration of justice into disrepute. Consequently, this court rules that uh, the audio recording should not form part of these proceedings. It is inadmissible. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. Yes. This uh, Kronye is available for yes, yes. further cross-examination okay. on Exhibit JJ. Right. Yeah. Ms. Kronye, she's just outside. <laughs>
What's your time, Mr. Balloon? Um, just after 10 past, maybe we can take the short, yeah, normal the, short adjournment yeah, we should. And, and, and resume at, yeah. uh, Sorry about that. Can you reassemble it? Up? From accused number two, is that correct? I was genader om a bekentenis te vat. I was not bewust van wie dit gevat zou geweest het. Sorry, uh, I was approached uh, to take a confession. Uh, I wasn't aware as to from whom was the confession going to be taken. Mi na wenzi wa uguti njenga taelo uguti ge angta tege confession uguti ya izo wenzi wako ubani lozo kuluma angwazi kama futa. Dat ik eerst later mij bekend hoor dat die persoon waar ik bekentenis wil afleeg a meneer Bongani Sandisu in Tanzi is. Uh, it only became later, uh, it became known to me later, later stage, that the person or the deponent uh, was uh, uh, Bongani Sandisu in Tanzi. Into enga zoya zika muvage uguti umuntu ge ozoyenza ge leo confession babu Bongani Sandisu in Tanzi. So, for the benefit of the public, it is correct so that the said confession was taken in terms of section 21A, so sorry, in, two, in terms of section 217, 1B, Roman figure 2. That's correct. Uh, go, uh, that is correct. Go, you can see the confession when I have to talk about it, I will have to talk about the section 217. Ma'am, it is correct that you took the said provision it talks about the accused. Is that correct? Nee, I can't say that I'm going to get the report. Is it now number two? I cannot agree with you there. That verifies not the word person. Nee, accused. Nee, as you may not can if you were just to refer me to the portion that you are, because here it refers to a person, not an accused. If you can direct me to where exact, to which point you exactly mean. May I consult, my lord? You are reading the the section. Yes, sir. Two one seven. Two one seven. Sub one B. That's correct. Sub 1B, As that's correct. As you don't know how to advise, because I can't even be accused or an obscure. Because if you, were, if you can just point out, because I cannot see or trace the word accused in here. It reads of such person, mm -hmm. against such person. Such person, yeah. So I, I can't see any word specific. Thank you. I don't see that specific word. I don't see that specific word. Thank you for the correction. I would like to retract that question. Let me withdraw it. Let's proceed. May I consult you? In relation to this, the provision that we, we were uh, dealing with, Section 217, it is indeed so that after taking a, 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 a confession, it must be reduced into writing. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, that is correct. We could not say that we move to move on to the next one. We could not say that we could not move on to the next one. The prerequisites of the provision is that the person who is from whom you are taking a confession must make such a confession freely and voluntarily in his sound and sober senses. Is that correct? That's correct. That is correct. We can say that 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 we can And it further states that we, it must be made without 
being induced or coerced or made under threat. Is that correct? Yeah, that yes, without having unduly influenced. That is, that is how it reads, yes. If you have a question, you can ask me a question. 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 For the benefit of the public, the same provision under Section 2171A provides similar prerequisites. Is that correct? You can say so, yes. But the only distinction is that the, set, the provisions in terms of section 2171A, it is made by a non-judicial officer. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, that is correct. We can also go to the Nage or two one seven one eight when Ziwage, Umundu Oma, see a Nage, a Umanji, Nomage Umesuve. In the same provision of section two one seven one A, it also requires the confession to be made in writing. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, that is uh, correct. By footage, lawyer two one seven one A, we are sure that the confession lawyer will mail final or go to Ipal with pants. It further makes a provision that that particular confession shall only be admissible unless it is uh, reduced into writing in the presence of a, a magistrate or justice. This is that correct? No good to give that is correct, yes. No good to give footy, a local Guzo went a guy, go to Yamugelege, the good Uma Yenziwa, Napambi Wakege, Umundu Oi Manch. If that as a, as a magistrate, if that confession in terms of section 2171A is made by an officer but not in the presence of in the presence of a magistrate, do you regard that as a properly taken confession? As we far ek verstaan, as daar enige bekentenis gemaakt word aan bijvoorbeeld een politie of een persoon wat nie die rang van officier dra nie, met ander woord is een laar rang. As far as I know, as far as, far as I understand, if a confession is made uh, to a person who is not an officer or a person who is lower uh, with regards to a rank, Mobamige Uguazi, Umangabage, a confession, Leo Yenzuage, Futi and Ziwa, Gumuntuge, Ongas, your Nage, officer, Nomagang, a school, Dage, Uniskunda, Esipan, Nomesis and Zanzi. Dan Mudardi, the Kintenes, Fuer Alandros, the Festa Hort. And then that confession needs to be confirmed in front of a magistrate or before a magistrate. confession That is not my sense that a landros fisis ten woordig hoef te wees op die stadium as daai bekentenis geneem word. Maar dit moet nog steeds in skriftelik geneem word en dan bevestig word weer voor een landros. It is not necessarily or it is not necessary for it that a magistrate should be present when it is made or when it is taken down. But it needs to be confirmed or the, the confirmation part needs to be confirmed uh, in front or before a magistrate. Ako si ugu tige uma yenzi wage kfanele imanji ibe kona na mo magistrate abe kona kota uma isi yoko nisegi swage loko kwenzi wa pambi wage umanji. And really? And what? And what? That has, that is. In really specifieke geval was dit nie a konfesi of a bekentenis in terme van artikel 1 sub a nie aangesien die persoon wat die konfesi afgeleed aan my aangeduid dat hy geen ander soortgelijke 
verklarings gemaakt het. But with the regards to this particular one, it is not a confession that was made under uh, section or sub uh, section one uh, section one sub a, uh, seeing that the person who or the the deponent of the confession uh, informed me or indicated to me that he had no, made no uh, other confession or uh, confession which is similar to this. Lapage panswa kege u section one lo na sub a. Besting a coge is to Mosalo, Mobag, Lomundu, Ebenza, Nomagbesenza, the statement the Pam Guam, who she looked Aiko any Ayen Zile, Angel Alena. That's correct. The, 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 the thing is, I, your evidence is that this is how you understood section 2171A. That is correct. That is correct. In the lag, you are in Muslim, I know him understand the Nayo section 2171A. But my question did not relate to how do you understand section 2171A. My question related to what is prescribed by the Act of Parliament. Unless you want us to read the whole section. For you to understand, you to can give, read it. you can read it. I said, please. He says you can read it. Sorry. He says you can read it. My Lord, may I read it with the assistance of my attorneys? Yes, Mister. Who is this? As the court pleases, my lord, my lord, section 2171 a uh, the section 217 says admissibility of confession by accused, and 1A says, and I quote, that a confession made to a peace officer other than a magistrate or a justice, or in case of a peace officer referred to in section 334, a, co a confession made to such a person, such a peace officer, which relates to an offense with reference to which such a peace officer is authorized in, in exercise, is exercise any power conferred upon him under that section shall not be admissible in evidence unless confirmed and reduced to in writing in the presence of a magistrate or justice. Thank you, Madam. Did you understand it? That is correct. That is correct. It does not relate to any rank of the peace officers. Do you agree? That is correct. I'm a peace officer. So it differs with the, the way you understood it. Do you agree now? That is correct. That is correct. Let's get into the date in which you you said you were informed by Mrs. Duplessis or you were requested to take a confession. Is that correct? That is correct. The communication between yourself and Mrs. Duplessis, was it in writing or verbally? Telephonically. In Kuluma Parat Kwamige, no Mrs. Duplessis, Abu Yenaga Wang Taylor, Wabungo Taimbo. So, the details of what you discuss between yourself and Mrs. Duplessis cannot be confirmed if she is not called to confirm such conversation. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. That is correct. So that part of evidence can be provisionally accepted 
unless or until Mrs. Duplessy is called to testify in order to confirm that conversation. Is that correct? Die rechter het reeds een uitspraak daarover gegeet toe ek die um, getuienis gelever het. Uh, the uh, judge has already uh, made a ruling with regards to that when I testified. En so ver ek kan onthou, was dit uh, aangeduid as dat het geskrap moet word van ons hoorsie. Uh, and as far as I can remember, it was indicated that uh, it should not form part uh, of uh, the record because it is hearsay. Maar, Sorry. Okay. ten opzichte van u vraag, dit bly die kese van die hoof en die ang, die staatsadvokaat, wat hulle met die deel wil doen. But uh, with regards to your question, it remains uh, the choice of the court as well as the state as to what they are going to do as far as that is concerned. Kui kun soge uguti in belage, angege gu when you arrived at Boxberg Court, it was half past two subject to correction, but I heard that it was half past two. Nee, dit was 25 oor 2 min of meer. Uh, no, it was more or less 25 past two. Starting after an answer, a box back on article 25 past two. 25 past two. And when you entered the court building, or when you entered towards the office that was prepared for you, that is room two, you saw police officers who were heavily armed. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. Were you not frightened? No. No. When you noticed somebody that was handcuffed, that was an assumption that this is the person who is coming to take a confession. Is that so? That's correct. That is correct. Ya boge uma ngabona ke umuntu ofaka ozankosi la ingacabangela khona ke ukuthi uyena ke lo muntu lona uzokhuluma nomuntu wokwenza confession. The person who was wearing the suit you said did you manage to know who that person was? That's correct. That is correct. What was, who was that person? Who was that person? The person who was that person? The person introduced himself to me, himself to me in the office as Dominic Mjiako. Why is that the person who was that person? Dominic Mjiako. Sy volle naam en van het ek achter van die dokumentasie gekry wat hy aan my oorhandig het. But his full details or his full, his full names as well as his surname, I got those from the document that he provided me with. Kotoage amakama ake apelele ngawa tolage kuloko 